Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us join together now in, in saying the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice.
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was morning, and there was evening, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed 
that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I speak to you the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. I wish us all a good morning, not in the confidence that all our mornings are equally good right now, but rather in the hope that one day, with sufficient repentance and labor, they might indeed be good for all. We are in a very difficult period as a national and religious community. The racism being protested by thousands in the streets is not about individual morality. It's not about pointing fingers at racists, but it's about seeing and changing the racist biases built deep into our systems of economy, housing, education, law, justice, and policing. This means that we, especially those of us who are inheritors of whiteness, must engage in some very difficult conversations about justice and liberation. As American Christians, 
We have a mixed legacy when it comes to these conversations. Our country itself was begun by men rioting and looting in response to an unrepresentative government that was not responsive to its people. And it came fully into being through a civil war fought against that government's military to ensure liberty and justice for all. And yet, from our founding documents all the way through the next few centuries of ensuing history, it is clear that this freedom was only guaranteed to a small minority of humanity. All women, the poor in general, and most especially people of color, are treated as subhuman even today in both the creation and enforcement of law. It is no accident that our modern police force serves the interests of wealthy white men and large corporations above all else. This is, after all, what they were originally formed to do in the 1800s by plantations controlling slaves in the South and industrialists combating unions in the North. It is ironic that the very actions justified by our founders in the name of freedom are now so aggressively condemned today when the wrong people employ them. As for Christianity, our founder was a destitute Palestinian Jew of color, a man of disgrace even within his own marginalized and occupied nation. In his last week, he entered the capital in a demonstration march directly opposing established political authority. He led a calculated riot, destroying property and disrupting commerce in the temple in protest of injustice under the noses of the occupying emperor, empire, and was arrested by the temple police and tried by both religious and political authorities who twisted the law to suit their needs and then finally was publicly and shamefully executed by torture as a criminal insurgent threat to law and order in a partnership between religion and empire. The religion subsequently founded in his name was built on a scandalous claim and attracted what were thought of as the dregs of society because of the radical equality in economy, rights, and value it offered in the name of Jesus the persecuted. Yet the centuries of church history that follow contain innumerable uses of scripture and religious authority to endorse slavery, force inequality, and condemn movements of people working for independence and freedom from oppressors. Today we are launched into our discussion as a church by two of our lectionary passages. The first is the magnificent origin poetry, which proclaims that all humankind is created equally in the image of God. And the second is what is often called the Great Commission in Matthew, in which Jesus tells his followers to continue the work that he began teaching following generations to obey everything that I have commanded you, and promising his presence to the end of the age. The question before us today is, will we take these passages seriously? Do we believe in the full equality of all? And will we obey Jesus in doing the work of justice for all that he calls us to? The first step of repentance is listening, not to ourselves, but to those directly affected. So I'm going to stop talking and turn the mic over to the Reverend Gail Fisher Stewart. She is a black woman, a retired police officer and professor of criminal justice, and now serves as an Episcopal priest and police chaplain in DC. This interview was recorded in 2016. During the eight minutes and 45 seconds that she talks, 
matching the time that George Floyd was pinned under the knee of the police who killed him. We will mourn 35 people whose deaths have particularly inspired the Black Lives Matter movement. Please join me in remembrance and in mourning. As a nation, how do we get to a point where we all feel safe? This country was founded on violence. We have to acknowledge that. It, it was founded on violence. Violence is in its DNA. Guns are part of this country's DNA, unfortunately. And while you have those who think that by having more guns will make us safe, there's this perception of safety that I think if we could ever get together and actually, and, and this is the call to, to people of faith, we're supposed to be different. And so if we could get people of faith together to figure out how, how do we do this? How do we really make our community safe, knowing that there's, there are those like me who say, I'm not gonna carry a gun. I could legally carry a gun. I could preach with a gun in a pulpit, which I just think, I, I don't think Jesus would um, carry a gun. Um, in fact, I know Jesus would not carry a gun. But what is the difference between people who say, I feel safe, I feel safe. Even when I see the world around me going crazy, I feel safe and I'm not going to arm myself, as opposed to those who say, no, I see the world going crazy around me and I need to be prepared just in case something happens. So it's really coming together and sitting down and figuring out how can we be safe in our communities? And if people are willing to give up some rights in order to be secure in other rights. How did policing develop in this country? We have to go back to the beginning of policing in America. And if we look at police departments in the South, they came directly out of the slave patrols of the South. And so those slave patrols were at first to control the comings and goings of slaves. They morphed into uh, controlling the comings and goings of free blacks. And once blacks were freed in this country, you still needed some way to know where they were. And so the slave patrols morphed into police departments in the South. In the North, a lot of the police departments came out of the desire of the industrialists to protect their interests. And so uh, when you had strikes or you had companies that were trying to unionize, then the industrialists would bring in police forces that weren't formerly police forces to break the strikes, to, to shut down the desire for unionization. And so then these were formalized. But the, the problem is that when recruit officers are in the academy, they get this kind of history that is not complete of policing, that we had watches and wards, and you had people who were doing citizen patrols, and because they didn't want to do that, they weren't getting paid, then we needed a different system. And so we borrowed from the Metropolitan Police Department uh, in London, England with Sir Robert Peel. And so it sounds really nice and an easy flow, but we leave out the part that deals with the underside, the underbelly of policing and how policing is really to maintain um, the values of those who are able to get their values and their desires codified in the law. And so you have a situation where, from the beginning, policing has been an us versus them. And the them have been people of color, uh, Native Americans, immigrants, anybody who was not in the mainstream of power in this country. Is the Black Lives Matter movement misunderstood? Unfortunately, in this country, especially with 
the killing of black and brown brothers and sisters, and now the murders, killings of police officers. If I lift up the police officers, it is perceived that I must put down the killing of black and brown bodies. If I lift up the black and brown bodies, it is perceived as putting down the police officer's loss of life, as opposed to it's both and. It's not either or. It's both and. But people don't want to hear both and, that both sides, all lives, are really important. However, at certain points, we recognize that black and brown bodies were not taken, consider uh, taken into consideration. They were, they were not valued. But if we could actually get everybody on the same level, they say a rising tide raises all boats. That's where we have to get to with this conversation. And it's not a put down if I say, oh, well, we need to pray for the police officers. And folks say, well, if you're praying for the police officers, you're negating what is happening to black and brown bodies. No, it's just that right now, the issue is the killing of police officers. And so we are not choosing sides. We're saying that they are all important and no one, no one should be killed. What are your thoughts on reconciliation? I have come to the opinion that we cannot have racial reconciliation. If we just look at the definition of reconciliation is to put back together something that was once whole. And the question I ask people is when have the so-called races in this country ever been one? When have we ever been together as the American people, if you want to use that term. And so before we can talk about reconciling, we have to figure out how do we get together as, as one people? And that question kind of eludes these, these discussions. How do we become one people? And whether or not we really want to become one people, what will happen if we actually become one people? What would that look like? Would we still have um, one class of people who was perceived to be better than another? And I don't think people want to deal with those really tough, tough questions and issues. What would we have to give up in order to become one people? And so racial reconciliation, I think, is down the road. First, we have to be Conciled, if that's a word, as one people and do the hard work of figuring out what does that really look like. Where is the church in all of this? Again, I think for people of faith, it's, it's kind of up to us uh, to call together talking groups where people feel safe to speak about their experiences without judgment, without critique, it's almost like therapeutic. Let me just tell you how it is. And then people can respond by saying, I think this is what I heard, as opposed to, no, you can't feel that way, or no, that's not how it is. They have to speak from their own experience. And so until we get to the point where we can speak from our own experiences together at local levels, I don't think we can ever do it as a nation. We've had national conversations on race, televised, right? Where do we go from there? What happened because of those national conversations? And so it's going to have to be on an individual basis. Jesus dealt with individuals, and that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to deal with individuals. And uh, I think the church is a safe place for many people to have those conversations. Let us join together now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do, Direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us offer our prayers in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, responding to each petition. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Creator of the universe and all that dwell in the seas and skies and all creatures who inhabit the earth, Help us to guard your holy treasures and to delight in all that you have made. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Word of truth, open our hearts to receive your message as it is revealed through Holy Scripture, the witness of your church, and in the minds and hearts of your faithful. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Spirit of life, strengthen us to reveal the fruits of the kingdom through the actions of our daily lives. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Architect of all that is, seen and unseen, may we rebuild the world in peace and give to each other the good gifts which you formed in creation. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Incarnate One, help us to offer your grace throughout the world, bringing people of every language, nation, and tribe into the baptismal waters of your saving love. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Wisdom from on high, descend upon your faithful people, that our voices and actions may echo your hope for humanity. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Gathered on this holy Sabbath, day of rest and praise, joy and worship, 
we continue our prayers. We pray for Tom, Lynn, Colleen, Marion, Shirley, Marty, Mason, Jay, Jerry, Lauren, Irene, Kevin, Raylan, Shayla, Mike, Alicia, Lee, Benny, Tom, Ozzy, Janice, Alice, Deborah, James, Derby, Emily, Beth, John, Jimmy, Father John, and Dustin. For all who have died in communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief but life eternal, let us pray. Hear, Hear us, us, blessed Father. Trinity. We also pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mike, our bishop, John, our priest, and Al, our deacon. On the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Mount Zion, Hedgesville, and St. Mark's, Berkeley Springs. And in our companion diocese in Columbia, we pray for the Reverend Edison Vergara, Mission Cristo Rey. At this time, I invite you to add your own prayers of intercession. We pray for our country, and in particular, that we may find the means to overcome the systemic racism that is so pervasive and which influences our culture in so many ways. Lord, in this time of great turmoil and conflict in our nation, combined with the struggle with this pandemic, the economic issues, and all the things we face now, be with us, Lord. Help us find peace that does not come at the expense of justice. Help us find healing that goes deeper and the surface. Guide our leaders and be with those who speak up for justice, that we may all come together and to realize that together we may find the source of all that is in unity with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us join together now in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is now time to recognize birthdays and anniversaries. This upcoming week, we have a variety of birthdays. So we celebrate the birthdays of Catherine, Dory, Carolyn, John, Rafe, and Dietrich. Let us pray the birthday prayer together. Gracious God, as we rejoice in the birthdays of these your children, we pray that the year ahead will be one of blessing and peace, and that the year will bring continual joy in the knowledge of your steadfast grace and love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have two anniversaries in this week as well. We celebrate also the anniversaries of Catherine and John, and Tom and Linda. Let us say the anniversary prayer together. Loving God, you have blessed this couple with the gift of marriage. We pray that they may continue to love, honor, and cherish each other, and that they will find in each other the reflection of your abiding and sustaining grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for a few brief announcements, our services continue as usual, 9, 10, and 11 on Sundays, and 7.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the evening. We will continue also um, offering the link to the family uh, prayer in the evenings on Sundays offered through the diocese. That's at 7 o'clock. Upcoming, as we get further into this month, the end of the month, I'll be taking a little bit of time off, and our music director will be taking a little time off as well, so we'll let you know um, of our plans as we get closer to that period. And we are also continuing to work on our plans for moving from the pre-recording to the live stream, as well as doing some small gatherings, and we'll just keep you posted as we continue to balance uh, our desire to be together in worship with the need for safety. And now, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.